Hello, hello, hello. Is anyone there? Is my audio working? I sure hope it is. Okay, let me go ahead and I'll give it, let's say two minutes um, and then I can go ahead and get started with this month's Replit Rep event that I'm doing. Yeah, okay. All right, folks, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started then. My name is Varun Patel. I go by Blue Hand Coding on all my socials. Um, I'm a high school senior, I've been programming for a while now, and I'm also one of your Replit reps, which means I like to do these monthly events where I do like a coding workshop or something like that. So recently I've been doing a lot of beginner level stuff, which I think a lot of people have enjoyed. Um, because there's a lot of good products, or sorry, projects. Um, so this month, I wanted to do a project that I really, really enjoyed when I was first starting out, and that was to make a game of blackjack. So if I bring you into my screen chair, and of course, do stop me if at any point the audio cuts out or the video cuts out or anything like that. Oops. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing is, hold on, I'm just a little disorganized right now. Okay, the first thing we need to do is create our REPL. So I'm here on REPLit.com. We're gonna click Create REPL. We're gonna use the normal Python template that REPLit provides. And we'll just call this Blackjack black jack and in this video we're actually going to be using some oop concepts so i'm going to call this blackjack oop um, just so it's easier for me to know what i am that i'm working with let's go ahead and create the REPL. now if this is your first time using replit or you know you don't use replit often my screen may look a little different from yours that's because i've gone ahead and customized it a little bit um, and you should be able to do that through your settings on your both your account and in the REPL um, itself. So you have the settings page, you can figure out how you want to layer things, how you want to stack things, stuff like that. So we have our development environment squared away. So now let us build, build a game of Blackjack. So what is Blackjack? So Blackjack is a very, 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 very popular um, card game and I've opened up this link here on how to actually play blackjack. And so what I'll do is paste that into the chat so you guys can follow along or read it if you, if you wanna take a look at that as well. Now, so what this is, is you have the dealer and you have yourself. Um, again, in this game that we'll be coding, we'll be making some modifications to um, how we format the blackjack game just for the sake of simplicity and time. But basically what it is is you get two cards, um, you, they all have their own point value, and the whole point is you don't wanna go over 21, but you also wanna have more points or a greater score than the person you're going against. And we'll see that as we start coding it, but that's sort of the very quick um, synopsis of how to play blackjack. And as I mentioned earlier, 
we will be taking with an OOP approach. So object-oriented programming, which I think some of our, some, you know, if you're a beginner, you'll definitely appreciate that. So first things first, let's start by figuring out why are we using OOP for this? Why is object-oriented programming the, you know, the way to go? Why aren't we using functional programming? The thing about object-oriented programming is that it's very easy to create a sort of blueprint, um, and then from that blueprint you can pull objects. That's the whole point. Um, you have sort of the structure, and then you can customize the structure as you need to to create individual specific objects. And so what this sort of picture is showing, and I'll actually go ahead and paste this in the chat as well, but what it is showing is we have this blueprint for a car which in Python or any programming language would be our class declaration, right? What does every car have? Every car has an engine, wheels, seats, um, you know, trunk, um, headlights, stuff like that. But when I have this blueprint, I can diversify each element of it to create their own, you know, thing. So an Audi would have a better engine than like a van, or a sports car would have, you know, better suited tires than the other ones. So that is sort of the whole premise of why we're using OOP. And you'll begin to see why when I demonstrate the first aspect of this game. So what I want us to do is work from the bottom up, right? So in Blackjack, you have your players, you have a deck, and then you have the cards. Of those three sort of elements to the game, the card is the most fundamental, right? It's the most basic thing that we can try representing in OOP, or with OOP, sorry. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to declare a class, which is done using the class keyword. So we're going to have a class, and let me actually go ahead and make this a little bigger so it's easier to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a class. Yeah, let me bring this down. We're going to make a class called card. Now what I want us to do here is what we're going to try to do is represent a card using a class. So when we initialize, oops, when we initialize this card, what do we need to give it? Right? When I have a card in my hand, what are the important details about it? Well, every card has a suit, every card has a rank, and since we're playing blackjack, every card also has a specific point value. Um, if it's like 10 points, if it's 1 point, stuff like that. And that's how we sort of determine if a player has gone over 21 or if a player has more points than the dealer. So our card, we need to make sure that we give it a suit, a rank, and a point value. And then we'll turn those into attributes, self.suit. This is a new keyboard, so I'm still kind of getting used to it. And it's a smaller one too, so... So self.pointValue is equal to point value. So we have created the basic structure for a card. So let's test it out. Let's play around with this. What we'll do is we'll call, we'll have a variable. Let's call it sample card. And it's going to be a card. And the suit is going to be, let me get my suit symbols up. Actually, let me copy and paste this preemptively, so you guys don't have to worry about that. So we have our, um, in the chat I posted, we'll use that later on, but those are all the suits, ranks, and points in array form. So we're going to have a card that's going to be a spade, and it's going to be, what rank should it be? We'll call it a king of spades. And I believe kings have 10 points in blackjack. So that is our sample card. Now we can go ahead and do is we can sort of format this so it looks kind kind of nice. We can format it so it looks like a text-based card, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to print um, a couple lines. This is going to be the top of our card, and then we're going to have the next part of the card um, that will be one, two, three. Let's copy this, and you'll see what I'm going for here real quick. 
So we have our empty card structure, if you will, and if I print this out, you get an empty card. So let's go ahead and fill this in. In the middle, I'm going to go ahead and put the um, sample card dot rank. That's the card's rank. And then right here in the front, I'm going to put sample card dot suit. And let me format these as F strings, yada, yada, yada. And at the end here, I'm also going to have the sample card dot suit. Not cards, card dot suit. Cool. Now, if I run this, ta da! I hope it shows up on the screen. There we go. Yeah. But you have this nice sort of like ASCII card, um, which is cool because we'll be playing, we'll make this a part of our game as well. So that is the basic, you know, our card right there. So I'm going to get rid of that. We'll use that later on though, but I'll get rid of it for now. So we have our most fundamental element, right? We have the card. The next thing we need to do is build up from that. Okay, if you have a bunch of cards, that's technically a deck. So our next step, as I implied, is to create a deck class. Oh, this keyboard is really getting the better of me. Okay. So when we instantiate a deck, um, there's really not much we actually need to give it, that I can think of at least. Obviously, if you take a different approach to this, it might be dependent or different. But I think something that the deck should have is a list that contains all of the cards. So we'll have a list of all the cards. And this array will be where all the card objects are going to get saved to. So that's our init. Next, uh, we have a deck, right? When you have a deck, you have to build that deck, which means you have to create all the cards, you have to take all those cards and then put it into this all cards array. You have to shuffle your deck, you have to draw cards from your deck, you have to reset your deck if you need to, um, you have to give cards to people. So there's a lot of smaller functions that a deck has that we can build into our, um, into our OOP game, if you will. So the first thing um, that I think is the most integral is to build our deck. So we'll say, we'll create a function, or sorry, a method called build this self is getting the this shift is so small and what we need to do is we're going to like I had I think it's still saved to my clipboard no it's not but if I pull up the where is it there we go I placed it in chat but I have the suits the ranks and the points so these are all the features we need to create a whole um, set of cards using a bunch of for loops. So what we're going to do is we're going to iterate over each um, rank and point, because again, there's the same number of ranks as there are points. And then within each rank, we'll go through each suit. So what I'm saying is we'll start with, you know, ace. You have an ace of spades, ace of clubs, ace of hearts, ace of diamonds. And then you move on to the next one, king of hearts, king of spades, king of diamonds, so on and so forth. And while we're going over the ranks, we're also going to be adding those point values to those cards as well. So what I'm going to say is for i in range length of ranks, we're going to do this using the index, which is how we'll be able to access our points as well. And then at the same time, for every suit in suits, or sorry, for each suit in suits, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new card, and that's going to be from the card object. The suit itself of the card will be from suit. The rank of the card is going to be ranks, and then we use the index, right? And then we have the point value is since the ranks and the points have the same index, or sorry, like same length, we can index them the same way. Same way. So our point value will be points i.
So hopefully that makes some sense. If if not, feel free to, to go ahead and stop me. Um, I can go back over it. So we've created this new card. Let's print it out. Let's print new card. Actually, inconsistent use, oops. I must have messed up when I copied this in from my clipboard. Okay, so it didn't work because I didn't actually like instantiate the class. So I call this deck is equal to deck. I will say deck dot build. And when I do this now, you see we get the memory addresses for all of the objects. So I didn't get any errors. Obviously, this is not the representation we want, um, but it works. And actually, the last thing I want to check is at the end, once we've exited this for loop, let's print out the length of self dot all cards. So this will tell us how long our deck is. Oh, I didn't even add it. Okay, never mind. So actually, what we need to do is we also need to say self dot all cards dot append the new card. So basically, we're creating the cards and then we're going to put them into our deck. So if I go ahead and run this now. I have 52 cards, which is how big your standard you know deck is. And I'm actually going to go ahead and bring this over here, so it's a little easier to sort of manage my space. Awesome. Okay. So. We've successfully you know, built our deck, so I'm going to get rid of these little helper um, print statements. I'm going to close this as well, so everything fits on one line. Perfect. So we've built our deck. Now the next thing we need to do is shuffle our deck. So we need to have a method so that when we call it, our deck will automatically get shuffled. Oops. Yeah, guys, this keyboard is really, hold on. I think I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my laptop keyboard. Sorry about that. OK. OK, OK. Time to restart. <laughs> so we'll define a function called shuffle. And this will take no arguments. And basically, all we need to do is we're going to use the handy dandy random library. Because this actually has this library actually has a function literally called shuffle to shuffle an array, and it's in place as well. So we'll just say random dot shuffle um, self dot all cards. So whenever the shuffle method is called, it'll use the random library shuffle function, I believe, to shuffle our cards. And you might be wondering, you know, why are we you know, this is just one line. Why are we wrapping it in a method? Um, I just kind of did it for like the cleanliness of the code. I don't want to see a bunch of random, like the random keyword in there. Um, it's easier if I see like deck.shuffle. It just makes more sense in my head, and I feel like it's cleaner and easier to read. So that is our shuffle. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a function that re draws a card and returns it. So it's a little bit different. So we're going to call it a draw card function. And what it will do is it will return um, self.allcards.pop. Now what this has effectively done is we're going to shuffle our deck. And what pop, done is, pop does, um, I believe it takes from the front of the list or maybe from the back. Um, I want to say, I want to say if you pop something, it's taken from the front, but I might be wrong. But anyway, once we pop something, it gets returned, and at the same time, it's also removed from the list. It's like popping a bubble, if you will. And it's the same deal with why I sort of wrapped it in a method as I did with the shuffle method, um, just to make it easier and cleaner to read. You know, it'd be easier to see x is equal to deck dot draw card rather than x is equal to deck dot all cards dot pop if that makes sense so that's that um, the next thing I want to add which is not necessary but if you do plan on expanding on this project I highly recommend you build this in it's just the reset and what this is going to do 
is just clear the deck. Just empty it out, nothing left, it's clear. And again, same deal with why I've named it the way I have. And then this method, um, it's called the give card method. And now what this is going to do is later on we'll create classes to represent our players. So it'd be really easy to say deck dot give card to, you know, dealer to player like that, and then the number of cards as well. So we're going to say we're going to specify a two. Now what that two means is who is the card going to go to, and then we're also going to specify the number of cards, like so. And now what this is going to do is for underscore and range, because we're not going to be using any variables from the range, number of cards. for So as many cards as they need, we're going to say two.deck.append um, self.draw card. So what this is saying is since I'll, we'll have our player class, our player class will also have their own deck. Um, and in those decks, we'll draw cards from the main deck and append it into their deck or their list of cards as well. And then finally, just for the sake of you know making things look nice, we're going to create a setup function, or sorry, method. And what this is going to do is this is just going to wrap the other ones into a nice sort of one thing. So when we want to set up, we just want to reset our cards, clear it all out. We want to build our cards, and then we're going to go ahead and then shuffle our cards. Uh, because with this for loop, our cards will be built in a specific order. We don't want that, so the game can't be predicted, so we'll shuffle them all up. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our deck class, our deck structure. Um, I don't really see the point in testing it out right now. Let's see. I'm looking at, I have like the code already done. I want to see if it's worth sort of we're testing it out, or if it's better to just wait. Mm. Yeah, let's wait. And I'll, I'll show you guys when we create our next class. So let's sort of recap what we've done so far. We're taking our OOP structure, and we're working from the bottom up, from the easiest, most fundamental part of our blackjack game, sorry, blackjack game, to you know the complexities. The most foundational thing is the card. Uh, every card has a suit, rank, and point value. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Afterward, once you, complete, once you have multiple cards, you technically have a deck. Now, a deck has some container which holds all of our cards, so that's our all cards attribute. Our deck is, needs to build itself, it needs to shuffle itself, it needs to draw cards, it needs to give cards, it needs to be able to reset. And that is the functionality that we built in with these specific methods. And finally, we have our cards, we have our deck. Now we need our players, or the dealer, or whatever you want to call it, but I'm going to call it player. So we have our player, let me see. Sorry folks, laptop's being a little difficult to work with. Okay, we have our player class. Now when we create our player class, there's nothing that we really need to give it, but there are some things that would be nice to have as you know attributes that are already set up. So what we're going to say is every player will have their own deck of cards. And again, as you saw here, that's the deck attribute that I'm referencing in this two variable. Let's get some space in here as well. OK. So every player has their own deck. Every player has their own choice as to if they want to hit or if they want to stand. And then every player also has their own score. How many points do I have with the sum of all of my cards? So. The first thing we need to do is we need a method which is able to update the score of our player, right? Because we'll be adding cards, and so if we add cards, we take cards, we also need to update our score so that it is according to the number of cards we have. So we're going to say self.score is going to be equal to the sum, and we're going to use a generator here. We're going to say card dot point value for card in self.deck. Now, every player has their own deck. That is what this is referencing. Every deck has a bunch of these card objects. 
each card object that has its own associated point value. So what this is doing, what the generator is doing, is it's getting all those point values from each of the cards you have, and then it's just summing them up, which is how you update your score. So that's that. The next thing we need to do is we need to check if our player has busted. And as I showed you, um, when you, you bust when your hand value exceeds 21. So if your score is greater than 21, you lose because you busted. So we'll say has busted. Um, this will not take any arguments, or sorry, I have any parameters. And what we'll do is we just want to return a Boolean value. We want to return is our score is our score greater than 21? That's it. It'll either return a true or a false. And then finally, there is one more method. And once you get this method finished, um, you'll see how the, the classes sort of come together. Um, so this method is just going to be for us to print our cards. Because it'd be cool to be able to see like the deck of cards on our screen in this little terminal or sorry, on our console. So this will not take any arguments. And what we're going to do is we're going to want to print every card next to each other. So we need to have a bunch of for loops to print the tops, the middle parts, the second, you know, the, the middle parts, and then the bottom. So we have to have loops for those. So the first thing we need to do, need to do is know how big our deck is. How many cards do I have? So we'll say deck size is equal to the length of self.deck. And we'll iterate over this. So, so for i in range deck size, and actually this should be an underscore since we don't use it, we're going to print the top of our card, and we're going to add an end um, with not a new line. So what this is doing is, let's say I have three cards in my deck. If I print them like how we normally print them, they would be stacked on top of each other, which you know is fine, but it doesn't look as cool. It would be nice if we had them next to each other. So in order to do that, since Python, when you print, you go top down, you have to print every card top down. So I'm going to print the top of this card. I'm going to print the top of the next card. I'm going to print the top of the other card. And so when I specify this end, uh, every time I print, it won't add a new line. It'll just leave a space so I can print the next thing. And again, um, when we finish this and I run it, you'll see the code and I'll go back and see, I'll tell you guys, you know, this is the part of the code that does this, this is the part of the code that does that. So once we do that, then we're going to want to print a new line. And we're basically just going to rinse and repeat um, <laughs> for the rest of this. So then we'll say for, actually, I'm going to go ahead and copy this for part. And then we'll copy this. Because then we have the top part, the middle part, and then that part, and then this part will be the same. And again, just bear with me for a sec. Um, <laughs> we'll get it all figured out. So we're basically doing the same thing that we did when we first started. We have our uh, one, two, three. We make these F strings. Yoink, yoink, yoink. So we had the first part of this. This was the, um, oh, I lied. We do need our eyes. Sorry, folks. I'm just a little disorganized. As much as I don't want to admit it, I am. OK. So the card, because we have to know what card we're actually printing, is going to be in our self.deck, and we'll index it using this i. And so we'll say card dot suit, right? And then same deal here as well, and here as well. So this does get kind of redundant, but it is what it is. So we'll print our card dot suit, and then we had our card dot rank, um, and then down here we also had our card dot suit again. And I believe that is everything. Also, we do also need to specify that the end is oops is like that okay 
So now I can test this out and show you guys what everything is doing and what we're actually working with. So let me bring this over here. Uh, first thing we need to do is actually create a deck and a player. So we'll call deck is equal to deck. And then we'll say player is equal to player. I mean, the class is literally called player. So our deck, we have that handy dandy setup function or method. So let's go ahead and call that deck.setup. And then next, what we're going to do is we're going to give our player some cards. So we'll say deck deck dot give card to player and then the number of cards number of cards is equal to we'll give them two and I see I really like how I named the uh, parameter deck it reads like plain English deck give card to player number of cards two like it reads really nice so now if we print out our player dot sorry, if we print out the length of our player's deck, they should have two cards. So player dot deck. There we go. They have two cards. So then what I can, what I can say is player dot print print hand is what it should say. Print hand dot print hand. Ta-da! Actually, let's add a little space between these so they don't look so bunched up. How about that? There we go. Oh, I missed one down here. Now there we go. So look, our cards are next to each other and they look so like, it looks nice. Our cards are laid out horizontally rather than vertically. So again, what we're doing is we have two cards. Our, our deck size is two. And we're going to print the tops, and then we're going to go to the new line, and then we're going to format this section right here with their suit. And we're going to come down, and then we're going to do our rank. Then we're going to come down, and we're going to do our suits again, and then we're going to close the cards off. So that is the um, that is that. That's how many cards they have. Next thing, let's test out if our updating the score thing is also working. So we'll say player.printHand, and then we'll also do player.updateScore, and we'll print out the player's score. And that works just fine too. We add print here as well. We need a new line to close it off. There we go. So yeah, they had a jack and a three, that's 13. A 9 and a 5, that's 14. 3 and 8, 11. So our update score, our print hand, our deck itself, everything's working just fine. The next thing I want to do um, is help create some helper functions to just make our lives a little bit easier. So we're basically done with the OOP component um, of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and close these right now just to save up some, save up some space. Cool. So um, when we make our game, we're going to want to print the hands of both of our players. So we're going to create a helper function called print both hands. And we're going to have the player's hand. And we'll just call it the computer's hand as well. And we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to update both of those scores really quickly. So we'll say player.updateScore and computer.updateScore. Because again, both of the arguments that we'll pass in will be um, from this player class. Finally, what we're going to do is we're going to print the computer's cards, computer cards, and we're going to say computer dot print hand, and we're also going to print out the computer's points as well. So I'm going to add that black backslash n so it looks nice. Points computer dot score and I can basically copy this because it's like the same deal with the oops with the normal player so we'll say we'll call this your card since you're the player player dot print hand player dot score cool um, let's test this out as well 
If I created the deck, create another instance of the player class called Computer, I'll give two cards to my computer as well. Um, and then let's call this print both hands, print both hands, and I'll give it the player and the computer, right? Boom, computer's cards, your cards. I forgot the backslash in. So the computer has a queen and a 10, that's 20. I have an eight and a nine, that's 17, perfect. And actually one more thing, what I wanna do to make it just look nicer is we're gonna print another new line um, and then we're going to add some like dashes to just separate the whole thing. Let's add 40 dashes. There we go. That looks pretty awesome in my opinion. We have our computer's card all nicely and horizontally laid out along with their point values. And then we have my cards horizontally laid out with my point values as well. Huh. So we have the cards. All of our points, our, all of our score updating is also working just fine. The next thing that would be nice for us to have is a helper function which just makes sure, or that checks to see um, if both players have busted. Um, and that's just gonna piggyback off of the this method right here that we have already created. So we'll just call this bust check. And again, just like our print in both hands, it's gonna take the player and the computer. And what we're gonna say is if our player has busted, so if that's going to be true, we're going to print bust. Um, the computer wins. Now, after we do that, we're actually going to just exit the game and close out the program. So if the player is busted, computer wins. Otherwise, if the computer has busted, on the other hand, then we're going to print, oops, We're gonna print backslash n bust the you have one. Since the computer loses, you have one. And then again, we'll exit out of that as well. So that's our bust check. And actually, um, let's let's call it. Let's see if it works. We'll say bust check player computer. If maybe if we get like the right amount, nope, 16 and 12, that's not enough. 16 and 7 is not enough. 16 and 13 is not enough. Ah, oh, this one's 21, not, not more than 21. Come on, we can definitely get more than 21. No way. I guess you can't. You either start off lucky or you don't. Here, let's give him three cards instead. I think that's what we need to do. Yeah, so the computer had 22. So the computer busted and I won. I had more than, oh, the computer wins since I busted and we checked that for that first. I had 30, Jesus. Uh, computer won that. Okay, cool, so that's working as well. So now, since we have basically all we need, we have our the structure of our um, classes, and at the same time, we also have. <sighs> oh, sorry. Sorry about that. But we also have the helper functions to make our lives a little bit easier when we're creating the general logic of the game. So what we're going to do is we've already basically instantiated all of our deck, our player, and our computer. So I just like doing this. It's my personal thing, but when I have a program that, like when it starts, like the main logic, if you will, I like adding if name is equal to underscore underscore main. Um, so we have our deck, so let's call that setup function on our deck, deck dot setup. And then we're gonna do deck dot give card, is it give card or give cards? Give card, I'm gonna call it yeah, it's fine. Give card two. We'll give cards to the player, and the number number of cards is two. So I'll copy that. We'll give cards to the player, and at the same time, we'll give cards to the computer 
or the dealer, whatever you want to call it as well. So after we do that, um, we've given them their card. Let's print it out. Let's see it on the table. So we'll say print both hands, player and computer. And again, we'll just do that bus check. I just like having it there and computer. Let's run this once. Everything is working just fine. Obviously, there's no way you can bust with two cards, but whatever. <laughs> Next thing we'll do is we're going to take the input from the user. So we'll say player.choice, because again, they have the choice to either hit or stand. It's going to be input new line. We'll say, would you like to hit or stand. And I'm putting them in brackets so they know which letter to, to use. Okay? So they can either be capital H or capital S, hit or stand. Actually, let me get rid of some of these dashes. 25. Because we can then put this in the corner so it doesn't take up too much space. There we go. You want to hit or stand. So it's working just fine. Okay, cool. Now, as long as our player's choice is to hit, is a hit, as long as they keep saying, yeah, give me another card, we'll say deck.givecard. We'll say, okay, we'll give you a card to the player, and we'll give you one card is equal to one. All right, and then we'll reset, and we'll print both hands again, and we'll do another bus check. Print both. Actually, I can just copy this. And if it, the game doesn't exit with the bus check, then we can ask for their input again. So let's see it in action. Would you like to hit or stand? I'll say hit. Again, I busted, so the computer won. And this is weird. I don't like how we can see like the previous game. I want to like update. And like you can't scroll back and see the other one. So we're actually going to add that functionality. So we'll say import OS. Um, and what we'll do is we'll come here and we'll say OS.system clear. So now if we run this, um, it should like clear after we either hit or stand. So let's hit. Yeah, that looks nice. And I can't scroll back or anything. So that's our player's choice. Um, with the computer, I didn't really want to make this too complicated, so I just said as long as the computer score is less than 16. So we, we basically just keep doing the same thing. Um, so deck.give to card computer, and we just check to see if it busts or not. And that's really it. Um, when you print both hands, you also update the score, so yeah, that's fine. And then finally, if you know. If it comes to like the computer has a score of 17 and I choose not to hit, then we have to see who has the higher score. So if my score is greater than the computer's score, then we'll say, we'll say you've won, yippee. Okay. Otherwise, we'll say the computer has won. The computer has won. And that, folks, is really it. Um, that's our whole game of blackjack, so let's play a couple. Computer has six, I have 17. Do you want to hit or stand? I'm going to stand. The feeling that the computer's. Oh, the computer won. Damn. I'm going to stand on this as well. Yes, I won. Uh, I'm going to hit. Dang, I lost. I'm going to definitely stand. So yeah, it's fun. Um, <laughs> good to kill some time, I guess, if, you, if, you, if you're into this sort of like ASCII text-based games. So let's recap. Let me open up everything, discuss what everything's doing, how we see it in the game, and stuff like that. Because this is kind of a meaty OOP project. So we're importing random. Random is going to be used to shuffle our cards. We're importing OS. Impo OS is to clear the screen so that it looks kind of nice card, the most fundamental unit of any card game. 
the deck, a deck needs to build itself, a deck needs to be able to shuffle itself, draw cards, give cards. Every player has to update the score to check to see if they've busted and to print out their hand, as we see here. Helper functions. What this does is just updates their score, clear the screens, and prints their hands in the score. The bust check, if they bust, then we'll just exit the game. Uh, we instantiate all of our objects. and or Sorry, we create instances of all of our objects. And we give the cards. If the user wants to keep hitting, they'll hit. If the computer score is less than 16, they'll keep hitting. And then finally we see who has the most points if they haven't already busted. That's the game. And right on time too, this is perfect. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for you guys. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, that's the whole game right there. 146 lines of code. Um, in terms of how people could go around building on this, advancing it a little bit more, I would personally recommend creating a system where you can continue looping. Like after we lose one, we can say, do you want to play again? Sure. Do you want to play again? Sure. Do you want to play again? Sure. Um, so that would be nice to have. You can use some while loops. And again, just like we're asking them if they want to hit, you can ask them if they want to play again. You can keep score. Um, you know, how many wins do they have? And then you can sort of create like some, like do you, how much money do you want to put? Because again, blackjack is a betting game. Um, but it's like how many, like let's say everyone starts with $100 when you create their object. How much money do you want to put in? You know, stuff like that. Um, and you can see how to add other elements into the game. And then obviously, if you want to take it out of, you know, text-based, you can also use libraries like Pygame and stuff like that um, to create something a little bit more interactive, um, which is also possible on Replit. But yeah, I guess you did join a little bit late. Um, but yeah, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you guys for another wonderful stream. I hope this helps some beginner out or anyone who needs to brush up on their OOP concepts. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for coming to this Replit event. Um, if you want to chat with me, if you want to ask me any questions, all my socials are in the About section on YouTube. Um, I, respond, I try to respond to every message that I get. So feel free to shoot me a text or anything like that. And I'll get to it when I get to it. Other than that, um, I wish you all a fantastic day. Um, take care of yourselves, wash your hands, eat good, work out, and uh, I will see you guys in the next stream. Peace out.